In this video, I'll be helping you with the Alex problem type called using the rational zeros theorem to find all zeros of a polynomial, irrational zeros. Here I'm given the polynomial h of x, and I'm told that there is at least one rational zero. From the rational zeros theorem, I know that the possible zeros will be in the form of p over q, where p is the possible factors of the constant term, and q is the possible factors of the leading coefficient. So here are my possible p values, the factors of 3, plus or minus 1, and plus or minus 3. And for q, the possible factors of 7 are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 7. So when looking at p over q, I could have 1 over 1, which would give me a plus or minus 1, 1 over 7, so plus or minus 1 seventh, or the numerator could be 3 over the 1 would give us plus or minus 3 over 1, and then over 7 for a plus or minus 3 sevenths. So we have a total here of 8 possible zeros, and we can test each one of these with synthetic division, where inside we would have each of these leading coefficients, 7, 11, minus 13, and 3. And then we would just need to try each one of these to see which one would work. So I'll start with trying a positive 1. For synthetic division, I would bring down the leading term. Multiply 1 and 7 is 7, and add 11 and 7 are 18. Multiply 1 and 18 is 18, adding here gives me a 5. Repeating the process, 1 and 5 multiply to be 5, and then adding gives me 8. So since I have a remainder here of 8, positive 1 is not going to be a factor. However, negative 1 may be a factor, so we'll have to test negative 1. This time, negative 1 times 7, negative 7. Adding gives me a 4. Multiplying negative 1 and 4 is a negative 4. Adding is a negative 17. Multiplying negative 1 and negative 17 is a positive 17. And again, we have a remainder, so negative 1 is not a factor. And we would continue this process, eliminating possible zeros as we go. And if we continued moving through this list, we would eventually get to this 3 sevenths. And here, when we multiplied 3 sevenths times 7, we would get 3, adding would be 14. 3 sevenths times 14, 7 goes into 14 times 2, and 2 times 3 is 6. So now when we add, we get negative 7. And then multiplying 3 sevenths times negative 7 would be a negative 3. Adding gives us 0. So with no remainder, that means that 3 sevenths is a 0 for this function. And so I can now rewrite it as x minus that 0, so x minus a 3 sevenths, times these are now my coefficients. So this would be a 7x squared plus 14x minus 7. And I can get my additional zeros from this new polynomial if I set this new polynomial equal to 0, I could try to factor. And while it doesn't factor, I do see that I can divide through on both sides by 7 to at least give me a smaller polynomial. Dividing every term by 7 would give me an x squared plus 2x minus 1 equals 0. And I can factor this using the quadratic formula. My b value is 2, so that would be a negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 times a, which is now 1, and times c, which is a negative 1, over 2 times a, 2 times 1. Simplifying, under the radical here, we have 4 and then plus 4, all over 2 times 1, which is just 2. Simplifying further, this radical can simplify since 8 is 4 times 2. 
then this would be a negative 2 plus or minus. The square root of 4 is 2, so that can come outside, leaving the other 2 inside, all over 2, and then separating. This would be a negative 2 over 2, plus or minus 2 square roots of 2 over 2. So we have negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 2 when we simplify each one of these. So we found two additional zeros. We have negative 1 plus the square root of 2, negative 1 minus the square root of 2, and previously we found 3 sevenths as a zero. So these are our three zeros.